Five patients, uh, mainly done in New Zealand, at Thomas at Andrew's site, at our site in Austria, and at the third site. And then we um, went on with this at PAT2, post market 60 patients, uh, uh, which was a multi center study. These studies are completed. Also, is completed the post market disrupt PTK trial, which was just to prove um, efficacy and safety of this device below the knee, which was once again a single arm study with 20 patients. Uh, at the side, there have been um, other investigator, dr investigator driven studies with new concepts in the LIRC and also uh, uh, with usage of this device in the common femoral artery. Enrolling right now is the DISRA PAD3 trial, which is uh, a post market randomized trial uh, using this technology, the intravascular lithotripsy, um, in a randomized way with a TCP. And we are all uh, looking forward to the outcome of this trial. And at the side, there's an observational registry, post market single arm with 500 patients in an all uh, commas registry um, looking at um, different other. Um, um, uh, indications. So, uh, concerning the FEMBOP disease, we have this are PAT1 and, and PAT2, 95 patients, and the uh, we mainly included patients with Rutherford 2 to 4. Um, the patients had to be moderate or severely calcified, and the endpoints, the main procedural endpoint was a procedural success of lower than 50% residual stenosis uh, with an exploratory endpoint of lower than 30% stenosis. The baseline findings you see we um, concerning with regard to bark definitions, we had 97.9% uh, uh, of patients with severely calcified lesions. The mean lesion length was 7 centimeters, and as Thomas has already pointed out, we treated around 20% of patients with severely calcified lesions. Concerning safety and efficacy, and I think that's the most important thing within these uh, two studies, we had only one great uh, DD section, as Thomas has already pointed out, with one stand placement, but zero embolic events, and we had this embolic uh, uh, filter usage at Andrew's site. The acute residual stenosis uh, after the procedure was 23.8% uh, with an acute gain of 2.9 millimeters. So the follow up for six months for all these two trials, 96% uh, freedom from TLR and 76.7% patency. And um, you see in this, uh, com we have in this challenging cohort, uh, challenging lesion cohort, a compelling six month result uh, outcome. This is in accordance with sustained hemodynamic and Rutherford category improvement. So it's not only uh, an improvement uh, with concern to patency, but it's also an improvement for the patients concerning uh, clinical symptoms. And it doesn't matter what kind of uh, lesions we treated, and this is um, uh, a breakdown of the subgroups, longer lesions, uh, shorter lesions, moderate, severe calcified lesions, concentric and eccentric. Uh, we had these uh, consistent, successful procedural outcomes regardless of the lesion complexity. You can see that there might be a little better outcome for concentric but eccentric, but there is no statistically significant difference. What we have learned, and I think this is really important to point out, we need to do an adequate sizing. It should be at least a 1.1 to 1 uh, with regard to the re reference vessel diameter. You see that you can increase the outcome here uh, considerably, and it's very important to overlap the energy. So do not uh, look at the end of the um, uh, markers, but look uh, where the emitters are, and you have to overlap the emitters to have the energy coming out to the point where you need it. For the infopopletia study, we included all kinds of patients with infopopletia disease, up to 150 centimeter, moderate and severe calcified patients, mean lesion length 5 centimeter. Once again, no uh, great DD section, no embolic event, acute uh, residu the residual stenosis 26.2 centimeter, good acute gain, and no um, major adverse event at uh, uh, 30 days. Now, the DISRA PAD3 study design is this study where we randomized the patients to lithotripsy with impact TCP or PTA and impact TCP, and um, this will be a very robust study with 400 subjects at six global sites, and it's just uh, enrolling. 
So thank you very much for your attention.